It's uh, Saturday morning, well, late afternoon slash well, afternoon. Um, Saturday afternoon. I am just waking up because I had a late night and I'm a bit groggy. But, new videos, new cars, garage, and track there. So, time to film again. So first off, new garage, um, finally set up in Auckland, changed jobs, done all that, been a while. But anyway, check it out, whole space, legit mine, okay, there's laundry and some storage stuff, but car space, tool space, uh, over here we've got full, still a bit of stuff lying around, but check it out, tools set up, ideally soon, we can have like a bench here, um, put a shelf storage down the side and have a legit setup, but pretty cool actually having a garage that's just straight mine, so amped. Secondly, um, this, look, new daily. I um, finally got a manual BMW. It's uh, super fast, it's a 523. Um, no, it's pretty slow, but I, ooh, sorry. I um, just picked it up about a week ago and haven't done much driving with it, just been tinkering with it. But wanted to save showing you guys till this video. Um, so we'll do a little bit of walk around and a bit of drive of it. Uh, but I basically decided that I am over owned buying cars that are automatic and not really what I ideally want. So I'd rather just have a manual and rear wheel drive as like a starting requirement. And I also needed a daily. So then this thing popped up for sale and thought, why not? I suppose I can tell you like a little bit about it while we're here. It's a 2000 um, South African import 523i factory manual. Um, it's a little rough like outside, well it's quite rough outside, a few dents, paints, a little bit like needs some love but we can get to that later. Um, had a buggered door handle lock which I just fixed the other weekend uh, but quite low case so it's like 129,000 um, K's on it. Fixed the door lock I think, I did, yes. Um, bird poo I know. So it's sort of rough, like missing skirts and outsides. <sighs> outsides definitely had like a just an older, older owner, I guess. That's I think it's had one family. What was owned in one family for like 17 years. A guy bought it off, had it for literally about a month. I think he bought it just to make some money and flick it, um, which he definitely did off me. But that's okay. But yeah, it's pretty tidy inside. Um, it's just like basic factory leather. Um, being the 523's just got the, the jet rag box, um, which, yeah, never going to be a steed demon and not something I can throw on that, unfortunately, but still fun. We've got, like, legit, I love it, actually, like, those old school click dials, but, and a clutch, so, super stoked. Um, yeah, um, so today, 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 what are we doing today, um, so the plan of attack for today is actually to get this big, well, whale, um, ready for my track day. The track day that I was planning to go to is just like an introduction to motorsport day, because um, I've never been to a track ever, um, so I obviously need to learn a little bit. So it'll be quite good to go along to that. I had originally planned to take the E46, but it's an E46 and it's old, and unfortunately the more I keep asking more from it and driving it, a little bit harder and then between it keeps kicking up some problems. I've done quite a bit of re work on it recently. I did the P, um, PCV valve. Um, what else did I do? Replaced some vacuum lines. I feel like I've done more that I've forgotten. Oh, I gave it a full service and look over. Um, I did the suspension last year. I didn't really do a video on that. I don't think I've really updated you guys, but I put e-buck. E-buck? E-back? E-buck. Um, probably going to get told I'm saying that wrong. Because um, I am. Uh, lowering springs in it, just the pro kit, and then went with the Bilstein B8 shock, so it's handling really well. And also with the 5 series wheels on it and the wider fitment, like I feel like I've finally got the handling dialed. Although it needs a stronger front sway bar because it's just not really keeping up with the suspension that well. Um, so I it was really amped because I thought that was handling well and I was going to get to the track, but now it's gone and just given up a power steering hose and the track days in two weekends, and I don't feel like spending. Well, I can't spend a couple hundred bucks on it. So basically, like, I was working on that and realized, crap, this thing's a 20-year-old E46. It's not going to be reliable. So I was like, I need to get a daily. And then so I got a reliable. 
not reliable, but like a, a this is the daily. But for the track day this weekend, I just gonna take this. I jacked it up last weekend and did like a full look over it. It's like checked drive shaft linkages, everything right through. Um, checked all suspension um, joints, joints, all bushings, everything. Um, and it's all pretty good. The only thing is like the front shocks are definitely toast. Like you can just lift the wheel. So the front shocks are doing pretty much nothing. Um, rear shocks do something at least. Um, so it's gonna handle like a very big pig. Um, but the one thing I noticed just going through it is the fan belt is quite perished. So I just wanna change that this weekend. So that's what we're gonna do today. It also, but it has like the, sorry, the manual viscous fan. So. I need the fan tool, so hopefully you're going to shoot to rip gun. I think they have one in stock, fingers crossed. And then grab a belt and change that. But other than that, it'll be pretty good to go for the track day. I might switch the tyres, because i got the 5 Series rims on that. I might switch my better tyres to the front of this, and then just do some tyre switch around to try to get some better tyres on this for the track day on Saturday. Um, so I'll bring you along. Also going to try to get like a, just a nice like casual stick the camera to the to the window thing so I can actually film and talk to you guys and drive it because I've taken it for a bit of spin and just cruisy but I've been a little bit careful on it till I had a, a look over it so what I want to do is do all that today and then fingers crossed today or tomorrow I'll include it in this video and in include it in this video but take it for a decent spin maybe out west of the beach somewhere and actually put it through its paces a little bit and see how it behaves and it feels so basically just want to give it a shakedown before the track day and check it's all good um, but yeah that's pretty much the news feels like a lot more because I'm stoked about it all but it's not that much I have a garage I have a car I'm going to track day Saturday happy much happy should probably shoot to Repco first um, I'm doing things in a dumb order because I'm not used to filming uh, there we go it's more vlog style now so you get to come with me while I put on my socks and stuff because that's how this works I'm over editing it's just gonna be pretty much one cut type stuff. Um, I'll try to tell you more about this thing as we get going. I kind of like, I promise I'm not trying to be the t typical YouTuber of like drip feeding it to you. I just get flustered and I can't remember what I was talking about it. Um, but, so I got off trade me like literally about two weeks ago. I probably, I don't know, hard to tell. I probably overpaid for what it is in terms of condition, but I don't really mind because I don't really want to sell it. It's like a passion net purchase for me. Like one of the first beamers. I suppose we really, I ever really had any fun in it first. And like long trips with my dad's E39. Um, so I just really love the chassis and like to try and get this chassis and like just like a factory reliable stock manual is I think quite cool. Um, especially cause like to me the E39 is never gonna be like super fast. Like you talk about a 530 in this versus a 3.30 in that and even that now is like 20 year old so in terms of speed you're not really even in the game um, but It's just like a really nice feeling chassis and manual just gives you like so much more feel to it So in terms of like a cruisy car that you can like have nice long trips in but also like Absolutely ooh, um, Like it's quite fun because it's heavy you can like hammer the thing and you feel like you're flying but of course you're not, so I like having that again in the car. It was like my first car. It was gutless, you could thrash it, and you thought you were flying. Get your shifts perfect, get like your throttle matching everything mint, but you're still like getting passed by like, I don't know, a Nana and a Nissan Tita. I was back from the shop, I'll show you the engine bag, because that's like, honestly it doesn't match the rest of the car. Like inside's really nice, don't get me wrong, it's like nicely finished, back's had like a dog on it, some scratch. Um, scratches. Um, uh, outside's like, I don't know, it's weird because the paint's not too damaged, but it's got its fair share of like dents and, and dents and spots all over it. Oh, there's the startup. Um, the thing being South African Import doesn't actually have any cats whatsoever, doesn't have any like secondary air pumps, so it's kind of funny. Um, not great for the environment, but it's like a super simple engine bay. Josh is sending me, watch out purists, um, the, it's like a, replica of like a genuine from like the ZF box I think like the actual like more M style shifter which will be cool to put on and just he said send it down see what I think of it um these are I mean this one's 
it's kind of bland, but it is nice. You get used to it. I can't say I'm like a massive fan on just the black gloss. Like I think there's definitely nice E39 finishes. So I'll see how I go with that. I probably will um, change it a bit. But check this out. Going in reverse. <laughs> Quickly on the on the barrage Garrett barrage <laughs> on the barrage buzzing on the garage buzzing on the um oh my word welcome back to angus guys um <laughs> on the topic of fizzing over having a garage check out how like satisfying this is never gets old especially like i'm flipping out at the moment that it's just like i can't quite comprehend that there's two cars and like that one's mine i, I keep calling this like the other car or something i'm going but check out the garage I don't know, maybe you guys grew up with garages, I didn't. I feel like the second I shut a garage door and it looks like that, I'm like, I don't know, buzzing. As high up as you can get. <laughs> Yo, oh, mask still. Um, sweet, so got the um, fan clutch spanner. Um, couldn't get the holder, but hey, I'll just have to try and make up swear Jimmy up. Pretty sure it'll be doable. And got a belt. Um, there's two sizes on the belts. Didn't have that one, other one in stock. Fingers crossed it's this one. Oh yeah, check it out. Ooh. Sweet, okay. So, that was quite a mission for quite a small haul, but we got them. And what we might do now, is I'm gonna probably have some quick lunch. And then, cause this thing, I don't really think it through. This engine bay is like, Toasty as all heck, obviously. So when I was trying to check the fan, I was like burning my hand. Check the fan, check the um, belt size. So have some food, and then because we can, take this to go fetch the camera mount while this cools down. Brains literally exploding at how cool that is. Sick. Yo, E46 time. Ha. How cool is this? Out of that one. Oh, into um, <laughs> into the E46. Listen to this. Ooh, man, so cool. So this thing still drives. Um, it's real rough in the low end and kind of shaky in the high end. I think it's to do with the diesel D I S A valve um, and intake, or also I've got like a vacuum leak on one line running from the intake. Um, so I think that might be it anyway. It's just not that comfortable with revs. On top of that, the power steering is quite heavy because I have to top it up because it's leaking all the time. That and the lack of healthy, youthful looking coolant lines is the other reason this isn't going to the track. So I'll drive it today because I just wanted the other one to cool down, but the plan is to just drive the E39 and this can sit until I've got the money to tinker a bit with it more and get it set up properly. Give this thing a one cheeky motorway on ramp pull before we park it up. Cool. Team, it is truly safe to say that. Whoa, sorry, I'm switching to the Osmos. I'm trying to get some balance on it. Woo, look at my face colors. Um, it is officially safe to say that I absolutely and utterly, sorry, I'm struggling to film in this. Um, hate shopping. Shopping sucks. Like, seriously sucks. Did like a couple errands. Okay, we got the belt. Many hours later, got the spanner. Many hours later, I got a car mount. So hopefully we can put this on the windshield, which means like if I'm at the track day or just taking this for a swim later, I can show you guys. But I hate shopping. Like so many people, busy as hell. Not my thing. But let me set this up. I think I forgot the base, but let me set this up. And let's knock this fan out and get onto it. Here's it, I'll show you actually while I got it. A little bit of a teaser of the outside. It wasn't really that much. I don't know, the white's growing on me. Um, like you'll see at the back here, the vents, the tow bars. <laughs> but uh, we'll get rid of that. And the dents, see like that's weird because the paint's sweet. We just got a whole lot of little dents like that. This side driver's door mainly the worst. Um, but get those knocked out and we should be away. I want to practice learning how to do that stuff. Um, but check out that. How's that for an engine bay? 
But like compared to the rest of the car, this thing is just whoo. So check out down here. Okay, some driving skills of mine on this thing, but let's give it a shot. Like, I don't know if you can see properly, but it's just meant like probably the best way to show is around the top of the engine here. Like see the blocks just clean as heck. And even like, oh, probably doing a terrible job of showing, but like if you look down the intake, all through there, the alloy is just like mint, but yeah. I suppose you can get the general picture. Very clean, very nice. New spanner in there, take that off, and the radiator shroud can come out into the belt, and fingers crossed. For some reason I had in my head this was a um, two-piece radiator shroud, so you could like remove the top half and then just unclip and bring the fan out with it, but it's not, it's a solid piece, so we've got some clips up here, that clip there, I have to then come underneath, and take off the under tray, unclip it from here, and there's a few radiator hoses that clip into it, so we take those off. I've cracked the fan off, that was easier enough with the new um, spinner, but it's alright because I wanted to change the front tyres anyway. So you can see with my great filming skills here, but there is actually quite a lot more space up in here than I thought to sort of get a, get a hand up and do this belt. Tension is here, so what I might try to do is actually just remove the fan. And I think with the fan just taken off and pushed to the side in here, between the pot and the bottom, I, the pot and the bottom, top and the bottom, I might actually be able to get away with changing the belt. So the aircon belt was easy enough with the pulley. Um, and I should be able to actually do it from underneath, which makes sense because I did think that was a bit of an extreme way of doing a belt. Um, but it's going to draw a nice trusty diagram of how it runs because I'm not going to be able to see very well. So. Just want to make sure I know how it goes back on. And there we go. Have our little perfectionist drawing. Got this guy out. Um, as you can hopefully see, they're quite fucked. About to snap. Uh, no. I think we're good. What's the chance of that? Okay, sick. Um, belts are in. Arms are. <laughs> it's been a little bit of reaching and grabbing and got everywhere. Um, let me bring this with aircon. Little short belt back on, which looked fine. And we've got a nice new fresh bolt up here. Round and round and up. Might even better put the camera up further to see. So all wound back up. Round. Water pump up there nicely. Um, just did it some hand twists off the crank to make sure it was all sitting right and looking good. So just need to put the under trays back on. And then in terms of driving, it's pretty sweet. This under tray here is some serious. <laughs> Actually, can't pick it up with one hand. Um, there we go. Some serious South African spec, like build model factory spec. Sure, you can put it on the NZ new, but look at this. Taken under protection to next level. Check this out. Um, so these are the ones that were on the back. Uh, 2018. They're like, I think they're directionals. I can't remember the make. Um, 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 um. Let's have a look. What did we have on here? I can't remember the make because it's <laughs> not one worth remembering. Um, Sifa? Anyway, they look alright. They don't look terrible, but check out like the put a nail indent in. It's gonna focus. Like they're 2018Z, so they've still got a little bit of friction in them. Like they're not great, but the rubber bends. But putting these on the front, because the last thing I want is this hippie thing under steering. I'd rather a bit of tail happy fun. Um, then these were what were on the front that I am chucking on the back. So these are 2013 Toyo Kumo? Ku Kumo? Yeah, 
2013 Kumo tires. Directional, but they like the treads are right, but they're hopefully you can see on the camera here, but they are like you try to put your nail into this, and you just snap your whole damn finger. They're like they have just gone solid as a damn rock. So I'll put them on now and see what they're like throughout the week. They'll 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 probably be um a bit slippery, but in saying that, like it's only 125 <laughs> massive kilowatts and like I think like 250 newton meters, if that, so so not a lot. Um, and with the weight, like I don't think braking traction in the rear is going to be an issue. Just put it down, um, it's uh, quarter to eight, so a little bit later. Um, but I got the belts done pretty easy, like I showed, and then just jacked up each side and uh, just switched um, rears to fronts, fronts to rears. Oh, sick! Okay, it runs, it's not squeaking. Pissing in the rain, but let's take it for a spin. Want to get a feel of what? <laughs> We're not going nowhere. Turns out, I just presumed. Now I feel bad. Um, I presume the front and rears on these being square fitment would be the exact same offset. Clearly mistaken because the front is so far deep in, they're legit like on my strut towers. <laughs> uh, that's annoying but also funny. I just presumed with this because it has two 3.5s on the front and two 3.5s on the rear and because these aren't in standard like it's a non motorsport model but someone's put these on there i just presumed they'd chucked like um kind of the eights or sevens but i presumed the rims would be the exact same like i thought it was just a square fitment um but it actually turns out and you can see it now i should have noticed it um but i just like reversing and i was like this ain't right didn't even get out of the garage um which is which is all good just a mistake um but because these goes here two three fives this very square fitment on the rim, right? Because the 235 on what I think is over here, I think it's a seven and a half, I don't know, I can't remember. Anyway, there's like a, on on that one, I know the front rims, back rims, it's like an inch with the front and not different offsets. But these look square to me, but I was completely wrong because this is also a 235. So I thought, oh mean, I just got square fitment, but they're not. They're actually the wider rims. This has just got a 235 stretched pretty much on it, and that's got a 235 chocker on it. And then what's happening because of that, probably can't see, but check it how close we are to that, that shock. Basically, this rim is touching the front shock. Legit, or not the rim, so the rims. Thankfully, the rim is, is just actually missing the shock. Like, a clearance must be like, like this. Like this, just not touching the shock, but the tyre is binding. I don't know if I'm happy about that. I kind of thought I was happy having four um, square fitment wheels. But seeing them smoked, and I didn't check the small details. I didn't put the two wheels next to each other and realise. I think we've all had a night, and I'll chop it up and make a plan of what wheels combo I'm going to put together for the track between all these wheels. So cool. Thanks for watching, and uh, catch you guys soon. Hopefully I had a laugh from my stupidity at the end. Ah, oh, Angus, why don't we just go for a boost? Why don't we go check out what these new tires feel like? Huh. Why don't you put on some wheels and don't hit the damn shocks? Ah.